Uh, today I'll be announcing that I'll be uh, retiring from from rugby league. As you all know, the past six months or so has been a really challenging time in my life in regards to my head knocks and my health. And you now, at not one stage, do you ever think I'd be I'll be up here in front of you all today announcing that that this will be it for me. He's had issues with this all season. All I ever wanted to do was was to get back and play the game I love and, and most importantly for, for the club I love. Um, I'm at a stage now where I'm, where I'm doing really well. I'm, I'm fine. I've been back at, you know, training with the, with the team full time now for a while and all that was going well. I felt really good while I was at training and I was training really hard. But away from footy, um, when I was at home, it was sort of a, a different story for me. Um, you know, I was uh, felt felt you know a different way, and um, I knew that's a that's a natural feeling to come off you know what I experienced at the end of last year. It was it was like my heart was was telling me that I that I wanted to play on, and you know I was doing everything I possibly could, but uh, my mind and 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 my head was was telling me otherwise. It was dragging me the other way. And for once in my life and my career, I, I had to put my my health and, and my happiness first. And, you know, it was an extremely tough decision for me to make. You know, I, I spent hours on hours and sleepless nights, you know, trying to find a way. Trying to find a way for me to to brush it aside and to and to play on, Dad. Ever since a kid, you always you always told me that I was the best, and you always made me feel that that I was the best. And you know, you still do to this day. And um, the sacrifices that you made for me as a kid, I didn't really know when I was younger. But when I'm a bit older, I really appreciate what you've done for me. The the countless troops across the countryside, um, New South Wales playing rep footy games and you know the opportunities that, that you gave me um, allowed me to be where I am today and to be able to achieve what I've done. You know I can look back and I'll take piece of, of what of what I've done in the game and you know the achievements the big games, the, the premierships, the state of origins, Australian games. I'm proud that, that I've come to this decision. The strength he's had the last few weeks to get up there today was just unbelievable. And, you know, he's he's a warrior and he'll forever be one. Yeah, he's, he's such an impressive person that uh, he's, he's one, of those, one of those men that when he walks into a room, you just can't help but follow him. And... My earliest memory of Boyd, it was actually when he was 10 years old and, and I was playing against his brother um, and Boyd was in his brother's team. Although his, um, his, uh, his playing career on the field is over, uh, as far as we're concerned, he's part of the family and he'll be here for a long time to come. To the players that, that have gone past that are not here now, but to the players that are here now, you know, I, th I thank you so much. Thank you so much uh, to Trent. Um, apart from my dad, um, he's had the biggest influence in my footy career, and the, I can't thank him enough for what he's done for me as a player, but but as a person as well. He loves the game and respects the game, um, and that. Um, he will forever look after the game of rugby league and, and the club, state and country that he, he's representing, represented and captain. Get to the corner, corner, scores the first try. So I want to say thank you again for everyone that, that's come today and oh, I need to sort of brush away these tears, the happy tears, I promise. And, you know, look back and, and celebrate the career that was. So thank you guys. All class in how he played the game and all class in how he signed off earlier today. Boyd Cordner speaking at 29 years of age, drawing the curtain on an unbelievable rugby league career. We'll talk about how he got to this decision shortly. But Gus, the player, the one word heard most thrown around today to describe Boyd, tough.
Yeah, well, unlike Paul and Danny, I've actually had very little to do personally with, with um, Boyd over the years. I mean, I'm a fan. I've admired him from afar and what he's done, the toughness of his football and the leadership qualities that he's shown. I know a lot of people very, very well within the Roosters organisation and how much they speak high, and how highly they speak of him to know that he's held in that regard. The thing I found about this announcement today were two things. Number one, that medically he's recovered. Medically, they weren't standing in his way of coming back. And that's, that's a good sign that he's recovered from the concussions. And at the back end of his career, though, he was pretty susceptible to it. There were only minor knocks that were sort of setting him off. So it's good to know that medically he has fully recovered. And also for him to stand there and emotionally articulate the way he did in front of that room, as emotional as it was, to speak the way he did, I'm just glad he's going to be fine and he'll make 100% recovery. Not for football, but for the rest of his life. You know, and that's really important. That's a, that's a really important message to come out of today, that medically he was past fit. Gus, I was there and I've covered a lot of media conferences in my time and I was standing you know, pretty close to Boyd and watching him and... I had to look away quite a few times because I was getting emotional looking at this young man who achieved so much on the rugby league field and he was standing in front of a room full of people who respected him and loved him. And the way he spoke, mm. uh, I always thought he was a, an impressive individual. Today he just showed to me, he gave me a real insight into what a great leader of men he, he is and will continue to be in whatever he does in the future. And... It was a very emotional day from the start. The whole Roosters organisation gathered uh, in, in their headquarters early and we saw people in that clip, like you know, Todd Carney was there, Mitchell Pearce was there, uh, Wade Graham turned up, um, Cooper Cronk was there, all these people from past and present who had somehow been impacted by Boyd Cordner and they all gathered and he spoke to them and they spoke to him and there wasn't a dry eye in the place. Um, and he... I've known him for a very long time now and I've got to know him and I would consider him to be a tremendous bloke and a fantastic example to, to all rugby league players. And uh, I, haven't, I haven't met a better uh, example to a rugby league player than Boyd Cordner. He might be retiring Gal probably a handful of years earlier than he would have liked, but, geez, he squeezed a lot into the Squeezed so much. You know, and I've got to say, I remember Boyd Cordner in 2013 in London in an Australian tour. And I saw the way he played back then, and I, and I thought, well, we were saying manager Dave Riello. I remember talking to Dave Riello saying, mate, the way this bloke plays, I don't know if he'll last past his 25. I've never seen a player put his body on the line week in, week out like he did. He was just unbelievable what he put his body through. And you've got to remember, as a teenager, he had broken jaws, knee reconstructions, mm. shoulder reconstructions. Ankles. To come back from all of that and to have all that going on throughout his career and to squeeze as much as he did in by the time he was 29, he had a tremendous career, but just... No self-preservation whatsoever. And I suppose at some stage your body's going to catch up with you and say, it's time to slow down. He's made that decision now. Um, and as Gus said, fingers crossed he's all right. I spoke to Boyd today via tech. We, we have a good relationship, me and Boyd. Whenever we've got a big event come up, a big game, a, a fight, whatever might be going on, we always text each other. We've always kept in contact ever since that uh, World Cup tour we, we spent together. And he's just a terrific, honest bloke. One of, one of, just a real nice guy that you want to be around. Yeah, what do you think your mate Wade Graham, who's uh, obviously had a few concussions himself, there's been a lot of talk about his future of late, would have been thinking watching he, that, that. He's okay. Today. Wade was there and I spoke to Wade today as well. But Wade's okay. You've got to remember, Wade's two or two or three concussions this year, they would knock most people out. They're purely bad technique by Wade Graham by rushing in and putting his head in the wrong spot and copping someone's knee or copping someone's hip. I spoke to Wade today. He's obviously got to definitely have next week off. The week after that, he's a buy for the Sharks. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's a buy. Or they've got two weeks off. He will then see a specialist to evaluate what he'll do going forward. But at this point in time, he told me today, he's feeling good. He's, he hasn't got headaches. He's not going home with headaches. He's not struggling to sleep. He's walking around absolutely fine. And he'll, he'll know more when he sees a specialist in about two weeks' time. But Denny, the rooster salary cap is always a, a point of discussion. Uh, this, how does this work with Boyd? I think he had, what, two years to go on his contract? How yeah. does it work for the So contract? they've already got a $350,000 discount from this year's cap because he was injured in a representative game. Remember, it was in Origin where yep. that was his last serious head knock and he hasn't played since. They will then have to apply for a medical retirement, medical dispensation for the next two years of his, uh, of his wage and he will get paid that by the Roosters regardless. Uh, around $700,000 a year for the next two years if everything is accepted by the NRL, which I think it will be, uh, will come off the salary cap. So uh, the Roosters... 
I mean, this is I don't want to put this in a pure football sense because we've just seen Boyd retire, but they'll suddenly be able to look at other players or even upgrade some of their their younger players um, who are who are in their squad already. So uh, I'm assuming Gus J- James Tedesco is the man that can continue as captain at the Roosters. Well, ready to made a leadership replacement. Yeah, you can't replace a person or a, or a player like Boyd Cordner and what he's done over the years. One of the things I can, we'll say about Boyd Cordner too is he made that position very much his own for a number of years while he was playing. In fact, I saw a lot of junior league coaches and rep coaches showing videos to young forwards about how they play that position. He's inspired another generation. This man, Tedesco, has obviously come through under him and other great leaders at the club. Um, You know, he's led his state. He's the obvious choice as the captain to lead uh, the Roosters into the future. Uh, Well done, Boyd. Uh, All class today. Simply brilliant career. (laughs) 